Good afternoon everyone, my name is Kirby Lau and I just wanted to share with you today a few tips about incorporating positive species interactions when you're managing land or restoring ecosystems. In particular, I wanted to talk about mutualism. Mutualism is a type of symbiotic relationship in which both species that are involved in the relationship benefit equally from being involved. Let me give you an example. Flowering plants and bees have one of the most well-known mutualistic relationships there is. Bees rely on the plant for food, like nectar or fruit, while the plant relies on the bees to spread its pollen. When the bees come to get some nectar from the flowers, they inadvertently pick up pollen on their bodies when they leave. And when they go to the next plant, this spreads the pollen to the next plant, basically helping the flower to reproduce. In this way, plants get the benefit of assisted reproduction, while bees gain the benefit of a nice new food source. Um, but of course, this is not the only mutualistic relationship that there is. This is just one of the most well-known. As you may have seen in the scientific article published by Shaver and Silliman, Coral also exhibit multiple mutualistic relationships with a variety of other organisms. This fact is particularly important to take note of when you are planning on restoring or managing protected and threatened coral reefs. In the tropics, for example, photosynthetic algae provides coral with nutrition as well as structural assistance. Crustose coralline algae helps to stabilize reef structure in exchange for a place to live. Reef sponges also use the coral reefs for home and help the reefs by cycling nutrients in the ecosystem. Sometimes, coral will form symbiotic relationships with other organisms that will protect it from predators, like the predatory sea star in French Polynesia. Unfortunately, very few restoration practices incorporate this knowledge into their management plans. That is where you come in. We know that many fish, crabs, algae, sponges, and more can benefit themselves from the presence of corals, but we also now know that corals can benefit from the presence of these other animals, and that they can help the corals survive. If we did this more often, perhaps restoration efforts would be even more successful. This might mean healthier, more well-established reefs worldwide. We've seen the benefits of mutualism in action during studies like a 2015 study that examined the effect of fish presence on corals. It proved, unsurprisingly, that the presence of fish was correlated with high coral survivorship and growth, simply because of the role of the fish in nutrient cycles. This practice can be applied in other habitats as well, such as this one, which is a mix of forest and farmland. Mutualisms can occur in every type of habitat, from tundra to rainforest to oceanic, pretty much anything that you can imagine. If we can learn to identify those relationships prior to making conservation plans, we can better predict the needs of the organisms that we are actually trying to conserve. For instance, this might mean ensuring the presence of sea anemones in clownfish habitats, or simply just recognizing the relationship between spider crabs and the algae that helps to protect them. This can save us lots of time and money when planning and managing restoration or conservation areas, and then in the end can result in healthier, happier, more efficient ecosystems. Knowledge is, in this case, certainly powerful. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and good luck with all of your future projects.